Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. And this is the second in a series of uh, videos on doing rug finishing techniques. So on the last video, I did a full Damascus edge and demonstrated that in the various ways you could finish the fringe. And today I wanted to do the uh, twined edge. So as an example, I have here a rug that I did uh, a few years ago, and you can see on the edge that it looks like it is woven um, on the loom, but it's kind of sideways-ish. And let's see if I can get a better picture of that. So let's see. All right, so here you can see that uh, it looks woven, but it's kind of a crisscross ways. So this is um, a technique developed by Peter Collingwood and is in his book, uh, Rug Weaving Techniques. And it's a really nice edge uh, for a rug. And then um, it ends with this little uh, braid here at the end um, but it doesn't have any fringe and that's what I like about it so I'm gonna demonstrate that today okay so here we are with our uh, rug sample again and uh, if you watched the previous video you saw that we did a um, full Damascus a half Damascus and then various um, fringe finishing or warp protector techniques uh, on the fringe so that um, depending on what kind of look that we wanted. Uh, this will um, require us to have a little bit longer um, weft or warp that was left uh, just makes it a little bit easier. So if you're going to use this technique, I would leave as long of a tail on your warp as possible. Um, typically, you will start uh, with the rug face down, and it just seems to work out better that way. Uh, you can start from left or right. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can also start in the middle. Um, on the rug that I showed you, it whatever end that you start on, you will have an angled uh, from the fell line down to a certain point, and then the um, border will continue uh, at the same uh, dimension across the weft, or across the warp. Uh, there are techniques where you can not have that angle, um, but it requires uh, either adding some a separate warp cord that creates a, a woven triangle here to take that up, or you can use um, one of the uh, existing warp threads and create that triangle. Um, you can also do that in the middle, uh, do the same, same thing. But what I'm going to demonstrate is uh, just the basic technique of starting at the left-hand side, having that angle uh, to a certain point, and then continuing across and have the braid at the end. Um, if you would like to explore some of the other techniques, and a lot of uh, rug finishing techniques, Peter Collingwood's uh, The Techniques of Rug Weaving has a great section in it, and you can uh, get that a PDF version of that book for free, um, and I will post the link to that in, my, in the description down below. Uh, if you want to, wanted to see the previous videos on, or the video on um, 
what we did with the uh, Damascus edging. You can see that in the upper left hand corner of the screen and I will create a link up there. So let's get started. So this is called a uh, twined or woven edging and that's exactly what it is. So I've got my weft protector in here or my warp protector, I'm sorry. I keep saying weft and I mean warp. So I'm going to take the first few threads out of the warp protector and I'm going to take and move my weight down here. So we're going to take the first thread and we're going to weave, plain weave, uh, through the existing warp threads that are sticking out and we're going to um, do let's say eight threads uh, so we're going to go over under just like we would do and i'm planning this so that the over under is opposite of what because this was plain weave and so it's going to be opposite of what that is so that i continue that plain weave structure so let's see i've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, eight threads. And it's helpful if you have um, a little comb or something to kind of push those up. So you're going to leave that thread where it is. And then you're going to take the next thread in the sequence. And you're going to do the opposite plain weave. So we went over under before, so now we're going to go under over. And again, we're going to go eight threads. So we're going to end up one beyond the, what we did previously. So we'll hold, the, hold those down and kind of tuck that up. And the first few threads, it's a little bit loose. That's okay. It'll tighten up. So then we're going to take the next thread Go over, under, over, under. And continue on past the next thread. So we'll tighten these up again because they tend to loosen themselves up. And then take the next thread and do the same thing. and include the next one. 
So now you can start seeing a little bit of the woven structure. So then we will just continue on. And then include that next thread. So tighten these up. So just like when you are weaving, you need to be cognizant of your tension. on both the warp and the weft. So if you are fortunate enough to have access to either some uh, long uh, tweezers or better yet, some forceps, um, it would make it go a lot faster. So if you take the forceps and you include the next thread in the line and you thread the forceps through the weave structure that you want the next thread to follow then you can take uh, the end of that thread grab it with the forceps and pull it through. So we'll continue to tighten these up and as we get further along in the weave, the edge, it will, um, they'll stay tight. So now we're going to, this is going to be the one we're going to catch. This is the next one in line. So we'll take our forceps and we will weave through there like that. And then you can go over and grab that little guy and pull it through. And that makes it go a lot faster. Once we get um, eight threads, two, four, six, so two more threads. Once we get to eight threads uh, that have been woven in, then the um, 
this will even out and stay consistent across the entire um, edge. Put that over there. We can grab it. Bring the next one in. And so if you're using tweezers, you can do the same thing. You just need to make sure your tweezers are long enough that you can get through the entire um, length of your weave. So pinch the tweezers together and then hold them together while you're feeding it through there. Oh, and I didn't bring this one out. And doing it this way does make it a little bit easier to um, keep everything because I'm able to keep the tension on my warp while I see two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. see it kind of angles down like this because it's not tightened up so we're just going to tighten these up and you can see how that will um, move back up where it belongs okay so we'll leave that one out That one in. is much easier if you have um, have the tweezers or the forceps or something like that uh, to feed them through here. And you don't have, you're not limited to eight threads. 
that you start off with. It kind of depends on how um, how large you want this border to be. Um, on the rug that I showed you, I think I did, I probably did like 12 threads or so. Um, because I wanted a little more substantial um, edge on it. So... The more threads that you have, um, the wider, the more initial threads that you thread through, the wider your border will be, and the longer this taper will be. Because the taper is what is determined by that, by how many threads that you have. So once you, um, once you finish with the last uh, th initial thread that you went um, under, so if you went under eight, um, once you get eight threads into the border, um, your taper uh, evens out or there's no longer a taper there. going to do now is we're going to pretend that this is the end of our uh, edge and I'm going to tighten these up and I'm going to take um, I think we'll do a four plat braid I'm going to take, so the eight threads that I have here, um, I can't really do anything with them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a braid of these. And to keep everything kind of stable, I need to put a good weight right there. So let's see if I can find something. Okay, so I'm going to put some books right here and pull these threads up so that they are tight. And then I'm going to just slide those off. I'm going to pull on each one of these threads and snug it up. And you want to be kind of gentle. You don't want to disturb everything. But you want everything to be nice and tight. And then we'll 
pull these up like so. And we can tighten those up once we get our braid done. So because I have eight threads, I think I will do a four thread braid with two threads in each um, two threads in each uh, what do you call these legs all right so to do um, a four thread braid we're gonna take two and two and I'm going to pass let's get two and two there we go all right we're going to pass the left left under the right left and then we're going to pass the right over the left and the middle will go the right one will go under the left one okay and then we'll do that again so we go under and I'm gonna keep those nice and tight um, and then this one goes over snug those up and then this one goes under snug everything up so let's do that again goes under over and then those go under that way and it's hard to see with my fingers covering everything so let's see if I can do it so we're going to go the left goes under the right the right goes over the left and then the left right goes under the left in the middle So let's do that again. Left goes under the right. Right goes over the left. The left, the right goes under the left in the middle. Let's go under, over, under. Under. Over. Under. Under. Over. Under. Go under. Over. And oops, under. All right, so now let's tie this off. So there are a couple different ways that we could do this. Actually, there's Three. Um, we could take and just tie an overhand knot right there, and uh, that's what I've done in the past. Um, it does create kind of a bulky knot. Um, we could do a uh, two half hitches and um, do it that way. That creates a little bit of a bulky knot also, um, but 
how you would do that is you would take one half, let's take the right half, and you could pass this around the back. Oops. And down through. We can use our tweezers again. Okay, so we can do it like that, and then do the same thing with this one, with the other half. So around the back and through, I can't get my fingers to work, like so. And then that's that's a pretty nicely nice looking little knot. Um, again, this flat braid wants to twist, uh, but this is this is a nice flat uh, knot. Tighten those up real good, and they should um, they should be fine. The other way that you can do it is to um, to whip the plait. So I'll undo these. Hang on to everything. So what you want to do here is take one of the threads and lay it down and wrap it back up like this. Pull them all together. Then you're going to take one of the other threads and holding everything together, you'll just wrap it around like this very tightly uh, for as long as you like um, or as long as your cord lets you then put it through that loop that you created with the one now pull up on that loop until you can pull it up into underneath that plaiting. It doesn't have to go far, okay? But then you can cut the top one off and the bottom like that. And you have a nice little um, braid at the end. So now we want to finish off uh, this. Um, you could take and um, cut these short, you know, cut them about like this long, maybe an inch long, and um, they would uh, they would stay. But um, I would be a little bit concerned about them coming undone. So what I like to do is to kind of tighten these up a little bit, make everything kind of even, and then I'm going to take uh, my darning needle and as I've done in the in past videos, because I don't like fringe, actually my husband doesn't like fringe, so um, so you feed this through the darning needle, and then you pass it up into in between the weft 
along one of the uh, warp threads. And you do that with each one. And you give it a little tug. And by passing it up through the weft, once you cut it off up there, it's not going to work its way back up. And as I've said in previous videos, um, I don't come out in the same spot uh, each time, and I make sure that I am not coming out on the right side of my rug. So you don't need to limit yourself um, to one edging on your rug. Um, you could use uh, a full Damascus or a half Damascus, eh, probably a full Damascus, um, and then uh, do a woven um, edge. And just kind of however much time you want to spend on your edging. Um, the woven edge does take a considerable amount of time to do, um, and when I did my big rug that I showed you at the beginning of the video, um, like I said, I probably spent as much time doing the two ends as I did weaving the whole rug. Um, it took a long time. And by the way, if you are interested in uh, how I wove that particular rug, um, there is a video. It's probably one of my very first videos. It's awful. Um, my camera was really old. Uh, and it was one of the first videos I put up on YouTube. Um, but it is created using a technique called shaft switching. And um, that is what allowed me to make the uh, lines. And if you go on my channel, uh, you can see... That's like I said, it's one of the first videos that I put up, uh, but you can see the technique and it is a pretty cool technique. And by the way, Peter Collingwood developed the shaft switching technique also. Peter Collingwood was pretty much the father of um, rug making, rug weaving. He gave us a lot of cool techniques. Okay, so then as usual, when I bury the wet warp, I will clip these off. Right, so there we go. So this is the back side. So we'll flip it over and you can see the front side. All right. 
So this is how it would look on the front side. And um, this little tail would be the end of your rug. And you can see it's a nice flat edging. Uh, it looks very nice. And uh, I, I like the way that it looks. Um, even though it does take a long time to do it, especially feeding the um, warp ends up through the weft. But I hope you enjoyed watching this video and uh, found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, I will be doing a, another video on edge finishing. I haven't decided what type of edge finishing but maybe we'll take a look at Collingwood's uh, book and see what other edge finishes are out there for rugs. And we'll do the do another one on the work that I have left. Thanks for watching and happy weaving.